All right. Good morning. Welcome to another uh, Office Hours Champions Using Teams Effectively, otherwise known as the Cute Office Hours. Glad you could make it. And we are here today to just talk about teams. And um, if you're coming here live, feel free to put a question in the chat or come off mute and talk to us. Otherwise, we will just chat it up for about a half hour. Um, probably today with some, I don't think we got a, a specific agenda, but I know we got random uh, tips and tricks. Um, but there is an interest in going over Power Apps with Forms. Um, Christy, you want, Christy, I know you want to maybe give us a little more uh, info about your, you know, what you're looking for there. Um, sure. Good morning, everyone. So, I use Teams. I use Teams Live, and I was hoping to get more versed with creating a form and setting up alerts. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And so, for instance, in my head, I'm thinking you can do that just with forms where you trying to incorporate power apps for a specific uh, reason as well just maybe for the ui of it or something so you can create forms and set up alerts wasn't aware of that please share more <laughs> there you go so yeah i'm thinking you know uh, forms plus uh power automate so uh, i'll step back yes that's correct that's yeah. the one okay so forms by themselves, they do have a uh, checkbox for getting an email about the response. So it kind of depends on who you want the who you want to get the alert. Um, but the the form owners can get emails with the um, uh, response. But I have uh, used Power Automate, and I think I blogged about it on Tech Community um, for using Power Automate to either send yourself a more elaborate email. Right, because once you're in Power Automate, um, and we can show it here too. But once you're in Power Automate, the a the, the action is you know form uh, response received, and then what do I want to do after that? And then you got tons of things you can do. So it might be as simple as send me an email, but it but it's a little more elegant than your typical email because I can make that email look however I want, say whatever I want, maybe grab some info from from the form and put it in there. So even with email, there's <laughs> <laughs> There's a cool, I'm just looking at uh, Nash's little sign there. <laughs> um, so even with email, there's some cool options. But we can also do things, and I think this is what I blogged about, we even tell, um, for, take that form response and post it to my team uh, in a channel. So a, a message to the channel that said that maybe says something as simple as, hey, form is received, click here to see it, or again, grabbing some data from the form and posting specific data to the form. And then, or uh, you know, push it out to Excel, push it out to a SharePoint list. So that you know, the kind of options are endless. But I've probably gone way too far. You just asked about alerts. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, email alerts or alerts in in Teams, um, either one uh, works. So I can certainly uh, show that here. Um, I like the alerts in Teams better. Yeah. Option. Okay. So let me do, let me share my screen here and do a couple things. First, I will see if I can find, uh, let's see, GCC, oh, this is my GCC tenant. See if I can find uh, the posting. It is old. I, I know it's a, it was, it's been a, maybe a couple years, but it's still correct. Um, but um, do tech community, teams, government. I think it was Teams and Flow. Yeah, using Teams and Flow in government. I had a um, series of articles about Teams and Flow specifically for the government cloud. And if I go down to the little tag, uh, there was gamification, talking to SQL database, um, team cloud tracking. It might, it might have been this one. Oh, yeah, I think so. So in this case, I was talking about using a form embedded in a in a uh, SharePoint site to track whether or not somebody had watched a video. OK, so in this case, 
um, just a basic form. Did you watch it? Did you like it? They, they hit submit. And then behind the scenes, and I'll make this bigger here, uh, behind the scenes comes the, um, the Power Automate. I think, it'll, you know, again, it's a little old. I think that looks a little different or maybe uh, or at least some different colors. Uh, but when a new response is submitted, that's the that's the trigger. After that, I can do a bunch of things. And in this case, for each of the responses, I was grabbing um, the uh, information from that form. And in this first case, I was dumping it to Excel. So I had to tell it where that Excel file is what table in the in that Excel file I wanted to use. And then I, you know, because Power Automate knows all about that form, I've got all of the fields from the form that I could use to uh, push stuff out. The result being, you know, a form like that, which of course can be a tab in a, in a, in a team, in a channel. Um, so that was the first thing I did there. I think I also, so this is the, the team, you know, looking at that spreadsheet, maybe talking about it. Hey, people are submitting responses. Uh, but I think in here I also, uh, no, I didn't. Um, I know I have one where I post it straight to the, um, da, 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 it's probably this guy actually, thanks. Post it straight to, so let's skip all that. That's some Azure database stuff. I'm basically talking to an Azure database and posting a message into the channel. So while that's a database, it's still the same concept, which would be if I go down, post a reply to a message here. So if you can see this, uh, tell it what's, so basically in our case, form received, what do I wanna do? I wanna post a, a message to a channel. So what's the team I wanna post to? What's the channel I wanna post to? And then what's the message? In this case, I was putting some, you know, some message from this database per se, but ignoring all of the, all that techie stuff, it, essentially, you know, knowing that Power Automate knows about your teams and channels and can post whatever message you want to post. So it's really co combining those two uh, uh, blog posts, right? Um, in terms of maybe the, 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 the skills you need to, to post that out there. But does that make sense? So, it was a lot. It was a lot, yeah. Because it gave me a few options. Yep. Thank you for that. Yeah. I guess what I had in mind um, to, work, to work myself up would be something as simple as creating an Excel um, or forms document where I'm looking for people to sign themselves up for, let's say, a training class. And um, I can post this form, let's say, in a team. And as people sign, put enter their names and select the dates that they choose to take the class, I will be notified somehow. Okay. Um. So FYI, right now I'm using SharePoint for that. Yep. So I created a form in Excel and I posted it to SharePoint and people from my team are able to go to the SharePoint site and input their information and then I have to export this file and, mm -hmm. and send it out. I want to do it in Teams. I no yeah. longer want to go to SharePoint. And yeah. I, I would prefer to be notified when there is a change to the document. So something like that. Could we do that? Yes, in a, in a, in a few ways. Um, I'm going to start with old school, right? So old school SharePoint is still true today. You can, uh, if you've got these things going into an Excel spreadsheet that is stored in SharePoint, you can set an old school SharePoint alert, alert that says notify me anytime this document is modified or this item row in the list is modified. I mean, that's a that's not even taking advantage of the fancy Power Automate tools. Um, so if it was just about getting an email to say something has changed, that's uh, that's built into SharePoint uh, right in the, the, the list or libraries alerts area. Um, in fact, uh, I'll just go there now like this document. Oops, sorry. Uh, this document here, uh, alert me. Uh, let's assume this was your spreadsheet. 
and um, you know, send me an email when anything changes and send it right away or send it at the end of the day or the end of the week. So this has been there, you know, for a while. So this is that's that's old school. So that'd be that'd be something you could do in 20 seconds. Right. We have that. I okay. want to take advantage of Power Aut Automate. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Right. So then the next step would be Power Automate. So um, in the case of a, whether it's a form, whether it's a SharePoint doc, really what you want to do is come in here based on that trigger and add an action. In this case would be, um, I think, Office 365 Outlook and send an email. So you could put, you know, put your email address in there with your own subject and your own body. And, and from a body perspective, um, uh, should be able to include uh, content from the form. What I'm missing here is what was in my blog post is there needs to be a little section here that kind of grabs those uh, fields and uh, makes them available to this next action. So I'm missing that. Uh, a little rusty on I can't remember how that which which particular action I need there but ultimately it would be probably a three step power you know power automate the, the the data comes in you grab it and now it's available for it to send yourself an email so it would be it would be relatively a pretty small email and of course that could be a, also a message to teams as well um, you get the same kind of just like you got a body here for the email you got a message body for the uh chat the, the email might be might allow you to be a little more i guess they both have html that's actually interesting if you did want to kind of get fancy with it and uh do some formatting i guess both of them have that option that's, that's actually kind of nice i didn't notice that um, so yeah either one of them can make a pretty richly formatted message whether email or or a uh, team's message based on that response coming in. Thank you. Yeah. I think if I was to go back, I think it's a. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I think it's a. Um, I think it's this apply to each. I, I feel like this may be called something new to, you know, two years after I've written this article. So this may be called something new, but essentially a loop that goes through and gets response details. That's that was the key I was missing from the the autumn the uh, example I just did. Once I once you do that though, then it's available to things like Excel or your email. So that was the uh, short I guess the short version of that. So hopefully I helped. Anything to add from Nash or Stacy? That covered that pretty well. I think it's a great example, a great use case, because once you've done that with with this scenario for like training, you end up seeing that there are a thousand other things just like this where being able to build out that automation, that workflow yourself is is really important. Um, and honestly, Ricardo, I think this is just a great example of that idea of of using Power Platform to enable a business area to digitally transform their work. Where, hey, it could send you an email. Okay, yep, uh, but I'm gonna have to do something with that email. Can we automate those steps, right? I shouldn't have to go and open the email, click the link to view the form results, copy it into a SharePoint list, then send it in. If I can take 12 of those steps and turn it into a flow myself, um, great. I didn't need to go and buy another product. I didn't need to go and do a project with IT. Uh, we, we've been able to go and deliver some real business impact for for ourselves in, in our own sphere of influence. I, I really do love this story. I will also say as you as you start geeking out on this, um, I know I did one and uh, actually put the customer's logo in the email too. So that's why I, you saw me get a little excited about that code view. Because with the you know with a little bit of code you can you know grab their logo and and now that email is not just a text message I mean it's a it's a very nicely formatted you know again it's just, it's depending on how fancy you want to get it could be very nicely formatted logo at the top uh, you know standard uh, footers at the bottom all that good stuff so something else to think about. And uh, Ash did put a link to uh, some more info in the chat.
know I had some random uh, tips and tricks. And usually uh, when I come each week, my thoughts are based on conversations I had the, the you know, the, the preceding week. And so I literally just had this uh, convo um, with uh, a couple convos with people today, uh, this, this week. Um, and one was, you know, I had asked someone to record a meeting for me that I wasn't going to be able to attend. And the response was, sure, I'll set myself a reminder so I'll remember to record it, which is cool. And I thank them profusely. But we have, and I believe it's in GCC, if not, I can show the commercial, but we have the record automatically button. And let me make sure that it's this is my GCC uh, tenant. Um, let me actually, uh, it is GCC available. Okay, great. So I'm gonna schedule this meeting. I'm gonna call it, uh, you know, I'll test one. And, uh, Let's just let's add Deborah to it. And Deborah's not going to make it, but she wants me to to record it. So anyway, I'm going to send it to. So I'm going to you know finish creating the um, meeting, and I'm going to go back in because I want to go into meeting options here. And we've talked about meeting options uh, a lot here. A lot of cool things, especially for large meetings. A lot of cool things going on here, but one of them is record automatically, yes or no. So that, that person that is graciously going to record the meeting for me, instead of trying to remember, they can just set uh, that there and hit save. And as soon as that meeting gets going, it will be recorded. Nobody has to remember. Um, so th this very week alone, I had one person who said, yeah, I'll try to remember. I had another person who I had to set, make the same request to. And that was their response to me. Yep, I set it to auto record, so we're good. So, um, cool, cool feature for for that kind of scenario. Um, and um, while we're here, uh, you know, I also did have some some conversations with folks about some of these uh, options, and it was in the context of uh, I had had a colleague say at best. Uh, in, in 2021, we should be, not be having any more messy meetings, I think is what he called it or something like that. But basically, we've got tools to keep us from having to have meetings the way we did like pre-pandemic when we didn't know what we were doing, right? Um, so for instance, uh, there's no reason to be in a big meeting and be worrying about, you know, a one-to-many meeting and be worrying about people coming off mute accidentally you know, noise from people's houses, you know, and, and they don't, they forgot they're off mute, right? If you know it's a one to many and it's going to be large and you know, people are not likely to talk, let's, you know, let's turn off the mics, right? Knowing that I can turn it on for the whole meeting at any time during the meeting, I can also turn it on for an individual if they were to raise their hand and say they wanted to say something. So this isn't a, an all or nothing button, like if I, do this, I'm, I'm not going to get mics in my meeting at all. But it just kind of makes sense. And yeah, just as someone said in chat, also for public notice meetings, it just really makes sense. And and so I'm in so many, you know, large meetings and they're not using this feature. And it just really, it kind of just makes me sad, you know, <laughs> because the the button's there and, it, and it's very effective for managing stuff. And, you know, we just need to know it's there and just use it. So again, it doesn't, doesn't have to be a super scary button because if you, change your mind, uh, you know, just um, go back and change it or, or unmute a specific person. And I think I saw a chat too. Um, yeah, dial in participants, even if they're dial in, there's a star five to raise their hand. So there's ways for even the dial in and certainly the, the people who are, uh, you know, in the meeting through the client to still let you know they want to speak. So that, that could be a, a really big one. It's just going to make you a, make uh, potentially a much more elegant meeting in terms of just no background noise, uh, you know, for recording like we're doing right now. You just know your recording is going to be more pristine. Um, camera off is probably, again, in a large meeting is probably a good idea too. What's the odds that you want? Other than at the end when people like to take that big picture in a large, in a um, together mode view, a lot of people like to do that at the end of meetings. Everybody waves in those seats. Uh, but other than that, 
probably not needing everybody's camera on uh, during a, especially during a big meeting. Um, so turning that off um, and again, turn, to, turn back on at any time. So these are two, two key features there. Um, and of course, remember, if you want to do that, you're, you've got to also incorporate this, right? Because we want to make everybody an attendee. And while this doesn't say it that way, that's what this option is. Who can present, who is a presenter, uh, means that every, anybody that's not a presenter is an attendee. So in this meeting, for instance, I um, make um, Nash and Stacy uh, presenters and everyone else automatically becomes an attendee. I've had people ask the question, uh, you know, kind of how this works. Uh, it works pretty flawlessly for me when I first add the attendees and then come back to this. And if I go to specific people, the people that I want, like Deborah, you saw me add Deborah's an attendee. She's there listed. Um, I've never tried like putting an email address in here. I don't think I don't even know if that would work, but it certainly works well after I've added attendees and I come and hit those specific people. They're they're sitting right there. Um, um, and then that works fine. And so Deborah's a presenter along with the organizer, myself, everyone else is an attendee. So this this meeting, I just love this meeting options panel. It's just got good, good stuff in there. Um, I guess the last thing I'd say here, too, is I also even for this meeting, I started out with people in my org for the lobby. So when you guys come in, you sit in the lobby initially when we once we start. There is no reason for me to, well, not no reason, but usually I don't want to have to see people keep coming in the bloops and going and hitting admit or having other people in the room admit if we're, if the meeting's open now, let me go in there even after the meeting is started and change this to everyone. Now, certainly there's some cases where, you know, it does need to, uh, maybe I do need to be sure about each person coming in, but in many meetings, once the meeting started, I want to go back and change this and just let people come in freely. I don't even want to hear the bleep, so I'll turn that off. So a lot of cool features in here, and it just uh, makes your meeting feel a little more professional, in my opinion. Um, any schedule to allow transfer of the meeting organizer? I know that um, multi multi organizers, I think, is on the roadmap. I don't know if we know anything about a date or a time frame. Yeah, a co-organizer meeting role is on our roadmap, and the I'm excited because the release plan includes GCC, and it's slated for November 2021. There you go. You heard it here first, probably. <laughs> one, one of the things that gets kind of caught up in that is the idea of breakout room management by people other than the organizer. Um, that one's supposed to come in October. Awesome. So yeah, we got both of those coming. That's great. Get out of here. Very, very good. So yeah, so a lot of uh, advancements have come uh, lately and, um, you know, more to come. For, for meeting management. See some chat going on in in the uh, chat section. I don't know if another question's coming. Feel free to come off mute if it helps. I will also say that the um, the um, what do we call it? Those the standout modes and all those fancy presentation modes is uh here well was is was here for commercial and is now i think there for gcc as well i think i saw that um am i am i true is that true am i making that up right now okay. i hit present um, I have been making it up for GCC because I should be seeing that. It's there. The presenter mode options. It's there. Yeah. I have it in my GCC tenant. Okay, so so, so my GCC tenant is behind then. Okay. Uh, yeah. No worries. 
It was a little deceiving though because I didn't realize you couldn't use it in um, PowerPoint Live. You can only use it when you're sharing your a screen or window option. Okay. And I think in commercial it works with PowerPoint Live, but maybe that that's not uh, for GCC yet. Okay, good to know. So I'll I'll keep playing with it. It, it was a pretty cool experience though. So yeah. use it. Absolutely. And uh, in fact, I um, we've got a couple more minutes. I think I can show that here. Um, Do you know off the top of your head how many people can we spotlight at once? I in a demo that I was doing to the county. Okay, I seven. Took it. I thought I took it to eight, but maybe it is only seven. And finally, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do anybody else because it was just for a demo. So there is a thing coming shortly called managed mode for a meeting, which mm -hmm. is designed to help the the live event scenario of, hey, I only want certain cameras shown. Mm -hmm. um, it's I don't think we have a public release date, but it just hit our internal rings here at Microsoft. Um, and they're looking at later this fall. Uh, so we'll, we'll stay close to that one. But the idea would be, hey, I'm in a a big meeting with and there's 30 people internally and 50 people externally but there are nine school board members or, or county board members um, and i only want those nine people's videos to show up for everybody regardless of who turned their camera on or not that's the managed mode for for a team's meeting um, so we'll we'll play that game as we we go forward here and and have something that'll uh, allow people to have their camera on but not make it take the main meeting stage. We'll have control over whose cameras show up on the main meeting stage. Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, and, and so that spotlight is is really useful. I've, I've seen, um, if, if you're seeing, seeing here, for instance, once I go spotlight, I get a nice big view of me, the presenter. Right, and so that that spotlight is good, and of course I could you know spotlight multiple people there as we just said up to seven. I also like to point out too, so that's the spotlight. Everybody in the meeting gets to see that, and then if I just want to pin the the presenter, I get the same view, but this is just for me. So I've been in meetings where I, I've been impressed that someone out there was managing spotlight, and as new speakers came on, they were spotlighting an appropriate person, and it really just looks like it makes a really great presentation. But if nobody is doing that and I still want it to look right, I mean, I can use pinning to, you know, get those bigger thumbnails, even if, um, and, and of course, pin more than one person, even if the, the organizers of the meeting aren't doing so. Um, but I have seen some folks really use Spotlight well for that. Um, and, uh, That's sure. great because I hadn't thought about using Spotlight when using presenter mode. So, so that, yeah, that is. That is good. And uh, let's see, can I do start I was trying to see if I could simulate some of these uh, modes here. Oh, there we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's uh, present. Do you want more cameras in? Is that what you're trying to do? No, I was just trying to get actually see the options there um, so we got that that view there what uh, what do we call that weather person view I guess and then I always lose my um, I should have pinned my uh, little presenter options that's the part I personally have liked the side by side better because as you saw the, the way it puts your cut out there it's really if you move around very much yeah the outline is really weird yeah there you go. That's the one I like. Right. Only thing I don't like is the the you know the presentation's a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another view there. Probably you know if this is a PowerPoint, I would probably want to just make my content bigger, knowing that uh, it's going to be placed a little smaller. I can mm -hmm. go back to regular view and all that good stuff. But this one gives my presentation the most landscape, but also puts me inside of it. So good stuff there. So you turn to the side and it cuts off your chin. Right. 
Yeah, I just thought I'd show a little bit of that. Awesome. Uh, did we miss anything from the chat? Or maybe it yeah, looks like a conversation. Yeah, Jim, Jim asked about bringing education sector features to the GCC. And it's certainly something that I've heard before as a CSM that there's interest in OneNote Classroom and some other specific features that EDU has that um, GCC and commercial doesn't necessarily. And I am not aware that there's any plans to be able to, to bring those EDU targeted features, but I, I can confirm that I'm not the only CSM who would like to see that happen. And we have heard that feedback and share that feedback um, as often as we have an opportunity, because I agree there's so much training going on um, in government agencies. I think there's a place for those features for sure. I think they would be utilized, but I don't know that right now there's any roadmap for that. Yeah, I get a little jealous sometimes because uh, uh, that education version of Teams is pretty fancy. Um, very, very high, you know, highly specialized or suited for the classroom setting, um, but it does some things that I was like, wow, I didn't even think you could do that, you know, so it is very cool. Awesome. Well, had a good conversation today. So hopefully we help. Um, we'll come back next week and keep chatting. Um, I don't know if you've got any questions in, in between time. Hit up, hit us up at you know CSM or you know whoever your CSM may be. Um, hit us up and uh, we'll uh, help you out there. But. Uh, Hope that was helpful, and uh, we will see y'all next week, same time, same channel. All Thanks, right. everybody. Thanks, guys. Good to connect. Take care.